Welcome to the EXP Group's discussion of ACCA paper P5, Advanced Performance Management. Now our topic today is to take our understanding of management accounting a step further and to link it to the um, structure of a business. This is really quite sophisticated stuff because we have to recognize that there is no one perfect business um, structure or organization that all companies must follow. And at the same time, there is no one management accounting system that is perfect. In other words, we, we have to be guided by the market as to how we best serve that market. So the structure of businesses is a constantly evolving uh, topic that must concern the uh, or, or have the attention of senior management on an ongoing basis. And the appropriate management accounting systems that serve that structure have also to be uh, adapted and developed. In other words, what we're saying is that the uh, modern approach to business structure is very much a, uh, an evolutionary one. It understands that there is a, uh, there are appropriate responses in a given context. It depends on the, the environment you're in in order to say what is the most um, adaptive adaptable structure capable of surviving and the best systems in that particular environment. Nothing is forever. The other um, aspect here is that these, um, the, the approach must be integrative in nature and therefore one has to understand um, the various ingredients that add up to making a business structure work. It's the people the operations and, and processes, the strategies and goals, objectives of the, of the business, and also, of course, the technical um, capabilities that, that exist as well to facilitate that, IT being one, uh, just one example. Now, let us look at um, an illustration of this uh, idea of business structure um, and, and how it's developed. Business process reengineering is a... Uh, is an approach which is radical in the sense that it looks at restructuring businesses. It doesn't um, accept anything as a given. It looks with fresh eyes at the processes that exist inside a company and has one major goal, and that is to make sure that the uh, time spent by people uh, inside a company is value creating, that there is a relevance to the um, business's uh, goal of serving its markets. So the uh, BPR um, model, if we will, it has to identify the processes to be examined. And then, this is the key thing, it's the updating or analyzing of processes. Uh, these cut across functional lines in a company, so it doesn't stop at any departmental barriers. It's looking at processes which run right through the company and says, how can we streamline those processes and make them, uh, make them achieve their uh, a proper functioning? This is an analysis on an as-is basis. So this is the uh, existing situation or the status quo. And the design to be is the changes that are proposed and finally the implementation of those changes. And once uh, a cycle is completed, one goes back and says, okay, we can never be satisfied. Um, we always, uh, there's, there's always an ongoing search to, to, to streamline processes. The key thing about BPR is that I, I've used the word um, a radical approach. It's, it's revolutionary in the sense that it creates a sense of urgency uh, and is uh, far-reaching in its impact on a business structure. It's, it's intended to be a total shake-up of the business processes. Once it's uh, implemented, it can be repeated uh, on an ongoing basis. Uh, of course, one doesn't want to uh, disrupt uh, an organization, so a BPR uh, exercise can be um, an, an, a, a sort of project-based and once it's um, implemented, once it's been gone through, hopefully it leaves uh, traces in the minds of all managers to, to be attentive to the need to always be 
streamlining, modifying, improving, perfecting uh, processes as one goes along. So it's, a, it's, a, it's something that should result in a mentality change at the company and not something which is simply forced onto the organization from. So just to summarize here, if, we, uh, if BPR is successfully implemented, it should bring um, dramatic improvements in the performance of the company. Um, here, it's, uh, it, it, looking at processes means that there will be teams uh, brought together, people from different departments who have to interact to make sure that the uh, company as a whole is, um, is achieving its objectives. In other words, the replacement of functional departments. Functional would be associated with a more traditional structure uh, which is divided up by according to functions. Um, a BPR type of environment is a, creates a need for multi or will develop, in fact, multi skilled staff and, of course, uh, delegate greater um, uh, authority or responsibilities to staff at lower levels. In other words, we uh, it can have the impact of flattening organizational structures. Now, BPR processes can be facilitated by uh, having available or developing good IT systems. The connection between IT and, and management accounting is um, clear to anybody who's, who's worked in a system um, which has been paper-based or with lots of manual um, work, which is slow, creates, uh, uh, allows mistakes to occur and so on. A highly performing uh, management accounting system must make intelligent use of technology. We've uh, mentioned this before in connection with the implementation of uh, activity-based costing systems. The whole e-commerce revolution is only possible because of IT. And of course, if we go into uh, retail business and so on, the point of sales information, how fast information can travel back from the, from the uh, customer end of things to suppliers and to uh, decision makers uh, is, is really, is truly um, breathtaking and allows many possibilities for companies to be able to um, improve the quality uh, and the speed of the information that they use. Finally, uh, we leave the candidate with some other um, systems here that they should be familiar with, executive information systems, um, which is senior, um, easy to use uh, information. Remember, the higher up you travel in the organization with uh, proposals, analyses, and so on, you have to make it simple for the for senior management. Yep. Uh, management information systems is um, a very general term, but this is more associated with uh, um, middle levels of the organization. It's summarizing of information that helps to um, support uh, and, and give substance to uh, decision making. Uh, enterprise resource planning will be discussed in a later, uh, at a later time. And then decision support systems um, is just another kind of resource which is provided to companies along with um, expert systems. Finally, just one uh, reminder, we uh, often become mesmerized by the possibilities of technology, but we have to remember at the same time that um, ethical issues also uh, are a great area of concern for, um, for everyone in, in, a, in a company. And this may be a good um, moment to remind ourselves that while technology opens up great possibilities, we have to uh, remember that there are going to be ethical constraints on the things that we um, can do. Um, the, the, the examples are, are, are wide ranging. If we just take one from the biomedical uh, field, for example, and the notion of bioethics, uh, the sorts of things that um, pharmaceutical companies can do in terms of uh, mind changing uh, drugs that, that influence behavior and, and uh, thinking and so on. But there are ethical boundaries to the kinds of um, uh, 
technical developments, which uh, may be constrained by social values, what, what is acceptable to the society. So this is perhaps just a good moment to re remember the importance of ethical issues.